come with the experience of having served as governor, I come with the experience of having served as speaker. I know what the parliament talks about. I know how it is to maneuver in the parliament and get your bill served. You cannot govern this country if you don't know how to manage the National Assembly to help you in what pursuit it is your pursuit. So if you ask me the question, am I running? My, my answer is that I, I am running because the president has said, you go while I watch. Those plan to trick the forthcoming election should think twice because I intend to resolutely protect and defend the sacred will of the Nigerian people to be expressed through the bullet box. Some are consulting, others running, but for Mr. President, let who you are should speak for you. Welcome to Political Update. Political parties are on finishing lines for the primaries. Some screening aspirants, or will I say some are arresting aspirants at the point of screening in some states. Party chieftains assassinated. Sad moments. And that is why many say politics is indeed a dirty game. Be that as it may, elections must hold, but ensuring decent process to the party primaries and credible general elections is my concern on political update today. My name is Mie Okiti. <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari has advised those planning to rig the 2023 elections to perish the thought as he is resolutely committed to using every legitimate means towards protecting the will of Nigerians. The president stated this while playing members of the diplomatic community to a breaking of fast, breaking of Ramadan fast at the status. <laughs> a stronger culture of credible elections to Nigeria than I met. Those planning to rig the forthcoming election should think twice because I intend to resolutely protect and defend the sacred will of the Nigerian people to be expressed through the bullet box. Please be assured that the international community we will support your government to achieve a hitch free election. Constituents from Bio, Bio, Shani, and Kwara Federal constituency of Borono State thronged Abuja to show support to their vo voice in the Green Chamber of the National Assembly, Montaria Liu Betara after purchasing the nomination and expression of interest forms for him at the APC Secretariat, they addressed the press, giving details of his scorecard of service to his people. They want him to contest again come 2023. 20 Naira, who was the assignment, all right? So it shows that the grassroots people are in full support of him coming back Okay, as our representative at the National Assembly. We've come here to pick the form on his behalf. And so this is just picking the form. The grand penalty for presentation to him would be done at our own, I mean, in the local government. Very generous, very humble. And uh, he has the people at his heart, the people of his constituency. Very nice man indeed. Very nice man indeed from the constituents, uh, uh, but uh, we, we are now going to the discussion of the day. Uh, with me in the studio is a female politician and one-time commissioner uh, in Lagos State, Kafilat Ogbar. I hope I got that well. <laughs> Welcome to Political Update. Thank you very much. Uh, we just saw a report on purchase of forms for reps and I, I was told you two are going for the 2023 elections president. for president or? <laughs> to the House of Representatives. Oh, perfect. I was I was uh, divine because we are that is now for the guys with deep pockets. <laughs> well, uh, I think uh, for we that are women, we would like to appreciate the president, President Muhammad Buhari, the national chairman of the party, Alaji Abdullah Adamu, and of course our national leader, Shwajibola Ametinubu, and all the 
leaders of the All Progressive Congress for deeming it fit to give women free nomination forms, even though we paid for the expression of interest form, at least for the House of Assembly is just 500,000 Naira, for the House of Rep is a million Naira, for Senate, 3 million Naira, for governorship, I think that's about 10 million, and then for presidential is um, 20 million, for women, I think. So, and then uh, for men, it's another list entirely. But we are appreciative for men, of it's this not just because problem. we know that <laughs> we have been clamoring for long and we have been agitating that they should encourage women to participate in political activities. And this is one of the very bold steps that the party has taken to encourage women to participate. And we are very, very happy about this. Okay, talking about women participation, how, how formidable are the women in these 2023 elections we are counting on? To? Well, most of us have been very formidable. For somebody like me, I've been out there for a long time and I've been contesting since 2023 and uh, 2003. And um, most of the time we, we speak a lot, at a lot of fora, we canvass, we lobby, we you know, agitate that they should ensure that they give women the right percentage at every level. And you find out that even some of the bills that we have been trying to work on to ensure that we have the right you know level of uh, Beijing affirmative action that they should ensure that the 30 percentage is there for the women most of these bills could not be we were not able to be passed at the national assembly but today most of us are prepared we are ready and we are working very very hard to ensure that we get our tickets by merit and of course continue to lobby the party leaders the most important thing that the leaders of Nigeria need to know today is that women must be encouraged to participate in political activities. When we have more women participate in political positions, we find out that we are going to have more gains for democracy. And even the responsiveness of citizen needs, the level will be very, very high because we know that we are your mothers. We care for you, we nurture you, we give birth to you. And it is what we imbibe in you that makes the society. So when a woman is well equipped, you are rest assured that the product that comes from her will be, will be well equipped as well in every respect, in terms of education, in terms of empowerment, in terms of whatever aspect you want to look at it. But when women are not encouraged, you find out that it's like, you know, already we are natural nation builders because we are the ones that build the human beings, we are the ones that nurture you from childhood and make the society. So when the nation builders are not equipped, you find out that what the product will be will not be good enough. So and at a time when we try to build people and then we have nurtured the children to university level and then the society is not good enough to absorb them, you find out that it's like truncating what we have tried to build. So when you cut it off at that level, you have a terrible society. So it's very important that women are well empowered. Apart from responsiveness of citizen needs as well, you find out that when we have more women, there will be cooperation across party lines and even ethnic lines. And this will help in sustainable peace, even in the country as a whole. We have a lot of crises all over the country, in some parts of the country. And then you know that we women, we are peace lovers, we are peacemakers, and we know how to ensure you know, that uh, uh, crisis, confusion, or whatever you want to call it, if you have conflict anywhere, we are very good at mediating and ensuring yeah, that, 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 that is quite interesting. So we need more women yes, to women. participate in political elections, not just collecting these forms as expensive or cheap, that, that, depending that, that, on anybody's criteria now, is that, not enough. We want to ensure that we win the primary elections without intimidation, without um, any form of uh, harassment, whichever form that, of that, harassment. That is quite interesting. You know, poli you politicians, we will talk less because if we talking is your business, that's it. Right? <laughs> so I don't even know where to come in. But as you are also talking about women having, you know, very many positions in the National Assembly or any other place, uh, the, the men are also doing their consultations because the Minister of Transportation, Chubike Rotmi Amechi, says, uh, if elected as the APC presidential flag bearer and wins the general elections, he would bring his wealth of experience to bear in taking 
tackling the challenges the country is currently facing. The minister gave the assurance while meeting with the governor of Lagos State and APC members. Let's hear from him. The Minister of Transportation, Chibuke Rotimi Amecho, while meeting with the Governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sanwa Olu, and the Oba of Lagos, Ridwan Wakionlu, said, having been in public office for more than two decades, serving in different capacity, he has gained the required knowledge and technical know-how to tackle insecurity and provide better governance for Nigerians. I come with experience, sir. That's what makes the difference. I come with the experience of having served as governor. I come with the experience of having served as speaker. I know what the parliament talks about. I know how it is to maneuver in the parliament and get your bills out. You cannot govern this country if you don't know how to manage the National Assembly to help you in what pursuit it is your pursuit. Uh, yes, let's see. I've also been at the federal level as a minister. And you'll agree with me that I'm not a minister who sits in the office. The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sangolu, and the Oba of Lagos, Rilwanu Akionlu, described the minister as a honest, hardworking, and patriotic Nigeria, qualified for the race. I certainly know too well um, what your pedigree are, you know, what you've done. You are eminently qualified, you know, and there's no doubt about that. If it's efficiency, knowledge, activity, you are qualified. We are very agile and honest to insult. The minister also interacted with APC members in Lagos State. That is the Minister of Transportation, who is also a presidential aspirant under the platform of APC. But from Bielsa State, on Monday this week, there was this report that the APC chieftain of the party was assassinated in a broad daylight. So let's hear an update from the police public relations officer of uh, um, of uh, Bielsa State. Uh, good afternoon, PPRO. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, let's, Thanks for having me here. Okay. Let's hear from you. What is the update of uh, the assassination of a APC chieftain in Bielsa State? An arrest or investigations on? Well, uh, it's uh, most unfortunate that uh, gunmen had to murder Honorable Sunday Franco Putu, and in the manner which it occurred, actually it happens at night around um, 11 p.m. when they scale the fence and gain access to his residence, and they went straight to the window of his bedroom and shot him severally. We were neighbors and um, other police operatives responded promptly and he was taken to the hospital where he was confirmed dead. We have commenced investigation and um, the Commissioner of Police, CP Benjamin Nevoli Saokolo, has already charged police officers to intensify their efforts to ensure that they get the perpetrators arrested. We have uh, also uh, gotten useful information from um, neighbors, some of them who had when the gunshots were fired, and uh, our investigations are on. In no distant time, uh, people should be rest assured, members of the public should be rest assured that the command will unravel the circumstances surrounding his death and arrest the perpetrators. But so far, no arrest. No arrest so far, but uh, we have reached, um, we have gotten useful information uh, that will um, lead to the arrest of the perpetrators. Thank you very much, uh, PPRO. We will probably get in touch with you in our next edition. God willing, maybe you must have made some progress with the investigations. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you. That is the police PPRO in uh, Bielsa State. An update on the killing of APC chieftain one Frank Oputo on Monday this week. So we still have in the studio uh, uh, an aspirant vying for House of Reps. Concerning uh, security situation as we approach the 2023 elections, how do you feel? How do you react to the security situation, both to you politicians and the country at large? Well, uh, for the security situation, I think um, we need to appeal to 
all our politicians that they should go out there in peace. It's only when we have a peaceful country that we can have a country to call our own. And Nigeria belongs to all of us. Political offices should not be a do or die affair. And we should all know that whatever political office we are aspiring for, we are going to there to serve our people. So why do I have to kill anybody to serve the people? Except you have other ulterior motives. So I want to appeal to all politicians, both male and female, that we should all go out there and do our campaigns in a way that we can, you know, attract our supporters, lobby our supporters and seek their support in a very peaceful manner and ensure that we do not go about with thugs and assassins and all that. It's very pathetic what happened, you know, the assassination of the man that died. And uh, we hope and pray that a thing like this should stop and we should never, never hear of any assassination, whether political or otherwise, of any form. But sometimes things like this, the, uh, your, the supporters, uh, supporters need to be properly tamed and addressed by you, the politicians. So what are you doing in that regard? Well, uh, it's not really about taming supporters or addressing them. It's about you as an individual. It's about the kind of personality that you have. Because for any supporter to misbehave or think of doing anything violent, he must have had the signal some way, somehow, whether expressively or silently, from your gesture, from your mannerism, from the way you operate or the way, or the way you speak or what they hear from you. So we should be cautious of how we speak about our opponents in the presence of our supporters and we should also see ourselves as brothers and sisters. Nigeria is for all of us anyway and whoever is there is there to do the bidding of the people. So let's ensure that we go there with an open mind whatever form of campaign we are doing, we should go out there with an open mind to see to the fact that we are going there to make Nigeria a better country from what it is today. So once you have that kind of intention and the mind that that is what you are going there to do, I don't think there should be any reason for anybody to be violent about anything. I know that most of the time there's always violence here and there, but we should have a rethink and not have another kind of mind towards 2023. It's, 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 quite, it's quite a very worrisome one, because even yesterday we heard from Porter Court that a member in the House of Reps, one Farad Dagogo, was arrested at the point of screening. He is also aspiring to be a governor under the platform of the PDP. And just before coming to the studio, about two, 10 minutes to 2 this afternoon, I called our NT Porter Court office for an update. and. Uh, I was told that uh, he has already been arraigned for alleged mobilization of cult members to go and disrupt the screen process. But still on the screen of PDP members, let's hear that 17 presidential aspirants of the PDP today facing the David Mack-led screening committee of the party. Let's hear from Timothy Yusuf. Said for screening at former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, former President of the Senate Dr. Bukola Saraki, former Anambra Governor Peter Obi, and Sokoto Governor Amin Wazere Tambua. Also to be screened are a former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Ayim Pius Ayim, Bochi Governor Bala Mohammed, Rivers Governor Nyesom Wiki, and Akwaibom Governor Udomi Manuel. Others are renowned industrialist Mazi Sam a former bank executive Mohammed Hayatuddin, a United States based medical doctor Mwachukwana Quincy, and Ovation magazine publisher Dele Momodu, former Ikiti governor Ayofayoshe, Cosmos Ndukwe, Mr. Charles Ugu, Chikwe Ndukalu, and Tarele Diana Oliver are also on the list. Also listed for screening in Abuja are all aspirants for governorship, state assemblies and national assembly elections in all the seven states in northwest geopolitical zone. Screening for same categories of elections in the remaining states, except Anambra will, however, take place at the party's zonal secretariats. We are ready to do whatever it takes. We have the resources, the intellectual capacity, and we have every other thing that is necessary to do what we have to do. At the end of the day, Whoever loses, we feel that he lost fairly and transparently. 
Meanwhile, National Chairman of the New Nigeria People's Party, Professor Rufai Alkali, has disclosed that the uniqueness of the party is in the truth that is the national movement, championed by the NNPP's sole presidential aspirant for now, Senator Rabio Musa Kwankoso. This Nigeria that we know today is not the Nigeria of our future. We believe there's a better future for people, for our children. He promised a free and transparent primary election in the party. It's quite a busy moment for almost all the political parties. Some have concluded selling forms, time for screening. So, back to you in the studio. APC, how prepared is your party for the screening exercise? And you as a member also contesting for reps, are the credentials intact? Well, uh, the party has started selling the forms now. And then the last day for the submission of forms will be on the 10th of May. And then the screening will start on the 12th of May by the special grace of God. So I think the party is fully prepared and everything is in place for them to start the screening exercise. And of course, we are hoping that by the grace of God, more women will be screened, more women will buy the forms and more women will win the primary elections by the grace of God. Okay, what advice will you give to your party? Because uh, the reports we got from Port Harcourt just the first day of the South South uh, Zonal screening, they were not too pleasant. So, how is your party working to ensure that we don't have such situations in APC? Well, uh, like I said, women are peacemakers. They should encourage more women at every level. When you encourage more women, you are encouraging more peace. So, and I also hope that the party is prepared so that to ensure that there is no violence at the screening points or at any point where we purchased our nomination forms it was very peaceful even though there were a lot of people that wanted to go in to purchase the forms but it was very peaceful it was well organized at the international conference center and i'm sure for the screening exercise as well there will be enough security in place to ensure that any form of violence or any form of you know anarchy will be arrested on the final notes uh... And it may sound funny as well, as well, as well. Are you under any pressure to step down for any candidate being a woman? No, not at all. I'm from Lagos State and we practice democracy in my state. So the best and the right candidate that can win the general election will be selected, will be voted for, and will win the election by the grace of God. And when your party announced the amount for the forms, President, one million, hundred million, Governor <laughs> 50, and the rest, in the two, 20 million. Well, uh, <laughs> we, I we, think... We tossed even before the... I think, reduction for I, think, I think that is the ploy to ensure that not every Tom Dick and Harry come out to dissipate the energy of the party, you know. Sometimes when it's too cheap, I am not supporting a high price for nomination forms though, but when it's too cheap, find out that everybody, even people that are not really very serious about uh, nation building or about politics, they will all come out and say they want to participate in politics. So, but for me, reasonably enough, if you want to be a governor of a state, you should have a good business and a good enterprise that can earn you at least a reasonable amount of money to be able to pull out from your business to say that you want to govern a state. To govern a state is not cheap. So, and of course, you should be prepared to do that. And to be a president of the country, well, 100 million, well, I don't know. <laughs> and when your when your monthly allowance as a president is two point five million naira. <laughs> anyway, on that note, I think uh, the leaders know best, so, and they have taken the best decision. <laughs> and we pray that some other day, maybe maybe after the elections, we will come not as an aspirant but a member in the House of Reps. By the special congratulations in advance. Thank you very much. <laughs> on that note, we end to this edition, and uh, pray we see you again on Tuesday next week, probably on Salamood. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.